Hello tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez bien. Je vous retrouve pour une vidéo d'info au sujet de la forge de l'Arconte. Vous le savez tous, une visite exclusive du prochain mode de jeu qui sortira à l'occasion de Rise of Iron vient d'être diffusé sur le site Game Informer. Je vous mettrai le lien en barre d'infos. Il s'agit donc d'un interview avec les designers Dan Callan et Alex May dans lequel on apprend bien évidemment quelques petites informations. Donc je vous mettrai l'interview juste après. Malheureusement, il est en anglais et donc je vais vous en livrer avant toute chose les quelques infos que j'ai pu comprendre et interpréter au mieux dans cette interview. Donc dans un premier temps on apprend, on le savait déjà, qu'il y aura des vagues d'ennemis à combattre en escouade, qu'il s'agit d'un mode pratiquement similaire à de la cour d'Orix et que pour débloquer ce mode il va vous falloir obtenir une clé. Cette clé comment la trouver Tout simplement en réalisant dans un premier temps les missions du mode histoire mais dans le gameplay de cette interview on voit le personnage qui poursuit en réalisant les missions de patrouille secondaire et qui collecte des éléments Siva jusqu'à looter de façon totalement aléatoire une clé qui va lui permettre d'activer la forge de l'Arconte. Donc on sait également qu'il existe trois types de clés différentes. Donc il faut comprendre trois boss différents qui vont donc vous être donnés de façon totalement random. C'est malheureusement toutes les informations que je peux vous livrer à l'heure actuelle. J'ai cru comprendre également que les mécaniques de combat seraient beaucoup moins complexes que dans une cour d'Orix avec des ennemis certes un peu plus diversifiés mais on ne devra pas s'attendre à un mode aussi complet qu'un raid bien évidemment. Il y aura en revanche de nouvelles récompenses exclusives propres à ce mode de jeu. J'espère que ces infos vous ont plu, je vous laisse découvrir la suite de l'interview et je vous retrouve très bientôt pour d'autres infos sur du Destiny. Ciao tout le monde I'm Dan Callen and I'm a world designer on Rise of Iron. I'm Alex May and I'm a uh, world artist and level designer for the Rise of Iron. So this is the Archon's Forge. It is a location in the Plaguelands patrol activity and also I think you visit here at the apex of our story. We yeah, have you coming it's here. like the penultimate area. When you're in the Plaguelands patrolling around, after you complete the, the story campaign, you'll notice that splicers will start dropping items called SIVA samples or SIVA offerings. A player will pick up one of these and be directed to go to the Archon's Forge. And once they have one of those items in their inventory, depending on the category and the quality and refinement of the sample, they will get uh, a unique encounter based on that. So the longest any of these encounters can last is five minutes. We have encounters for every splicer unit type, and we have unique bosses for all of our encounters as well. Some of them have some abilities you haven't seen before. There will be unique rewards for completing uh, Archon's Forge encounters. The rest of the Plague Lands is very much blizzard in your face all the time, super cold. When you get into the fortress area, it starts to get a little warmer. You get the uh, the slag runoff happening, the you know the lava streams. I thought it would be a nice contrast that you have this cold, snowy exterior, and then when you come inside, it gets super hot and muggy and oppressive. Yeah, and it's uh, also it also has some significance in, in uh, yes. the campaign. Yes, so it is a significant location to the Splicers. Uh, there is a reason why they built the fortress. Here here and not anywhere else. All the fallen architecture you've seen up to this point has been ships or stuff that they've stolen or jerry-rigged. Like this is the first time you've seen them actually construct something. Outside of the prison of elders that is. It was a really cool opportunity to have this like Lord of the Rings, Mordor feel, this Tower of Sauron out in the distance. Originally, this was the inside of the castle. It was part of the rest of the bubble. And uh, so you could seamlessly go up in here and you know things change over the course of development. <laughs> and we find that some things are more practical than others. <laughs> and eventually we had to split it into its own level. Technical constraints were apparent from when Archon's Forge, the event, became a real thing. So my job in Rise of Iron was, was to think of uh, fun activities for players to participate in when they're in the patrol mode. So when I first saw the interior of this space, it screamed out like Colosseum. It screamed out like this is, this is where you go to, to rumble and this is where you could have an audience of people kind of looking down on you and watching you just go into this mosh pit. Almost just, like two men enter, almost, one man leaves. Almost <laughs> like something out of a popular film. But no, um, <laughs> the idea was this is going to be the Colosseum where you go to have your knockdown drag out brawls. I see it as kind of a Court of Oryx meets Prison of Elders light. The goal for, for Archon's Forge from the beginning was, well, Court of Oryx is really cool. Like that's, that's its own thing. It should live as its own thing. But if we want to give people a space to say, imagine you're, you're out in patrolling the world and you see one of those, the enemies 
moving against each other events. We call those skirmishes internally. And people love going to skirmishes and, and just wiping out endless waves of guys, but there was never really an incentive to do it. It was just something that kind of happened organically in the world. Um, so what if we gave players an avenue to have those kind of encounters, um, organically meet up with teammates, add some kind of uh, challenging aspects to it, like when you die in the arena, you're kicked out in the door, you're behind the door. So put some element of risk reward into it, but give players a chance to practice their pure like shooting skill. Yeah. Um, no real uh, complicated boss mechanics, just pure going into this mosh pit and brawling and duking it out while well, having kind of an audience up in this area. We wanted to have some kind of spectator experience as well. Like I'm in here, I'm doing really well. I die, I go back into this, into this space up here, this waiting area, and there's a chance that, hey, if this guy is solo and he's doing what he needs to do, he could win it for everybody. So you're rooting for the guy in the center to be like, oh, come on, do this, do this, do this. And we also have avenues for players to get back in the fight. So if you complete certain objectives or spend certain currencies up in the observation area, there's a chance you can get back in and, and help your buddies out. The main gist of, of the fiction we came up with for the space was the Splicers as, as a faction have some rules and they have some, they have some structure to their organization. So if you are a, a, a member of the Fallen Rank and File and you want to graduate to Splicer, you have to get yourself a SIVA sample and you have to present it to the Archon and you have to be ritualistically uh, we want to say initiated. Trial, <laughs> like trial by combat, trial yeah, by yeah. fire. Yeah, so, so yeah, so there's there's some kind of initiation to join the Splicers, and they do that by seeing if you're worthy of of defeating them in combat. If you can become a worthy Splicer, then you can you can join their ranks. So you see a lot of intentional callbacks to prisoner elders. We wanted to establish that, yeah, in fallen culture, this is something that they do. Trials by combat are a very common thing, and that's how you rise higher in the ranks of a fallen like pirate crew by saying, hey, I can beat this guy up. He's too weak. I can beat this guy up. And the, the splicer's goal is to become deified by this, this technology. They want to be, get to the rank of a machine god themselves. So the standards for doing that are pretty high. Like if you want to be a god, you have to be able to at least hold your own with other gods. Coming to the Archon's Forge and presenting uh, the Splicers with, with more SIVA to add to their arsenal is how they're like, okay, you gave us this, now let's see if you can survive the hardships of being one of us. And so when a Guardian gets one of these samples, you can only imagine like, oh, what's a really cool thing for Guardians to do to these enemies of the tower? Let's go defile their most sacred ceremonies. They, they don't like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, they're not, they're not cool with that. It's like putting a Burger King coupon in the basket they pass around at church. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's they're out for blood. When you play the Archon's Forge event, you are getting a taste of this is what the Splicers do to initiate people into their... Times five, because they're pissed. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah they're, they might be going a little harder on you because you're, you're a guardian. They're not fans of, of you guys. But you'll see things like these domes that we originally just had in, in Prison of Elders as these big spectacle pieces, but we thought it would be cool if we brought those back. And we have, it provides us both with a way to get enemies and new, new objectives into the space, but it also is a cool callback to like, oh, Variks wasn't just messing around when he placed these kind of haphazardly. This is something that is deeply rooted yeah, it's in like fallen a culture. part of their history that he's bringing forwards and reprising in the modern day in the uh, reef. So the initial uh, initial thought, once going back, you know, Colosseum, uh, the Prison of Elders, really, the the layout worked very very well, and if you can tell, it's you know sort of reminiscent of one of the wings of Prison of Elders, and that was intentional from an, uh, an efficiency standpoint. Also, uh, it just works as a as a a shell that we can fill with cool stuff, and so when designing the space, it was. Um, how do we make interesting pockets of gameplay? So over here you have the high ground and uh, there's ramps and bridges. And uh, we went through a couple of iterations uh, figuring out cover placement and what makes for an, in an interesting space. And so you have the back hallways which are, uh, which are uh, hold over from the prison, but then the uh, central area is, has a lot of uh, elevation changes, um, but other than that, it's relatively open. But there's a lot of a lot of um, tall blinds we call them, where you can play games of like cat and mouse around them with the enemies. 
uh, we generally find that, um, especially in PvP, it's really fun to have those kinds of fights where, you know, you might not be able to see them, but you know where they are, and you, you're rotating around a pillar, right? And eventually one person might be like, you know what? Screw this, I'm going over the pillar. Yeah. Jump up, jump over, and take the enemy from above. And, you know, you feel awesome, and you just punch them in the face, and they disintegrate. Yeah. It's always a good time. Yep. It was, it was that foundation of, like, a solid arena space, plus... What can we do to to encourage players to like move around from from cover to cover? Like like you'll see that in the, in the actual encounters, but um, we never wanted people to feel too safe. We never wanted people to feel too too sheltered. Um, so that informed a lot of the design, um, and also giving like like yeah, defining these unique spaces for for specific callouts. Like oh, he's on the high ground. He's over by the the magma pit. He's over in the center. Um, and just giving giving our AI room to, to make those cool, interesting AI decisions that they make pretty much on their own without us having to give them a lot of directed, like, hey, specifically do this. It, we wanted to keep it open so that we could provide a variety of encounters as well. Yeah, the Archon's Forge specifically, we have uh, a number of encounters and they're all themed around specific combatants. So we wanted to say, hey, we need a space where practically any kind of fallen combatant can move around efficiently, can, can make those smart AI decisions they need to make, and players can have interesting choices from where they want to fight from as well. If you think of the number of Court of Oryx encounters we had, there's more than that. The trade-off is they're not as mechanically complex as, a, as your Court of Oryx fight. Like, like we said before, the goal here was to make these knockdown, drag out like brawls and not have fights that relied specifically on, oh, this certain mechanic is, is active, you need to kill guys in a specific order. This is just about going in and clearing out waves of guys as, as fast as possible and, and just stay alive. Yeah, like if Court of Oryx was summoning like the equivalent of a MMO world boss, right? This is more along the lines of, I want to I want to go do a firefight where I can just kill and be awesome with my friends and not have to commit to something like say a strike. If you like killing guys in Destiny, this is going to be one of your favorite hangouts. There was a lot of uh, a lot of different roles that this space had to fill, and I, I feel like I feel like it turned out pretty well. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it. I'm looking forward to get it, getting it out in the world just to see how people devise their strategies to it. And I can't wait to see like the first group of guys clear the hardest waves in like 30 seconds. Like that's and hopefully they won't find too many cheese spots. <laughs> Fingers crossed.